Hello, Alette. This is Carolee Case with CarolieCasePhotography.com and the Sheet Critique Forum here for week number three. I'm sorry to hear that you're having focusing issues with your Canon, but glad that you're sending it in to get fixed. And I'll be hoping for you that when it comes back, it's working the way that it should and you can get more in focus pictures because that's kind of important to what we do, isn't it? We need those cameras to focus when we tell them to. So I'll be hoping that it all works out for you real soon. This first image here is so dang cute. It is just making me smile today. I don't get the opportunity to photograph um, really any babies except for Caucasian babies. And so I absolutely love to see babies with different skin because they're beautiful and because I'm jealous. And maybe someday I'll have the opportunity to photograph a couple of different ethnicities. Um, and I've heard that sometimes it's easier because they don't have all those color issues that us Caucasians do. So this little girl is stunningly beautiful. The first thing that's standing out to me here is the light. This is gorgeous sculpting three-dimensional light coming from this direction, lighting her on the our left side, falling off in this direction, creating beautiful subtle shadows under the eyebrow, nose, these beautiful pursed lips, and over here on this side. It's gorgeous. And the exposure looks really good here. The color looks good. I love what you've paired together here. It's very different and fun. Makes me want to do something like it. This lavender color here with these beautiful greenish turquoise colors. It's really fun and fresh. I love it a lot. Okay, now when I do this pose here, well, first of all, I want to tell you I like that she's down here in the bottom part of the frame. I've said a couple of times over these three weeks, um, ugly foreground, beautiful background. So great job positioning her in the bottom third of the frame. Now when I do a pose like this, what I like to do is have, I do it two different ways. I do it one way on the beanbag where I use smaller rolled up like burp cloths or receiving blankets. But when I'm doing it on a semi flat surface like this, I have a really long rolled up bath towel, like one of the really large bath towels just roll it up and then I just taped it like it looks so ghetto but it absolutely works because it's got a little bit of squish you know so as I position them on there it doesn't create any of these um, I don't, I don't want to say harsh lines because it's not, but it wants to give just a little bit to look soft and then I can squish it on one side to lift an elbow here or here. So that's how I like to deal with this. And then it also will give you a solid line so that you don't have to worry about this over here or these details becoming distracting. It just becomes smooth and solid. So maybe that will help you when you're doing this shot in the future. And then in regards to the hand position, this this is so cute. I love that we can see this little hand here. And in that perfect posing world that I try and live in, I would love to see this hand and fingers poking out here too. And then just the way that I work with these little ones, because my camera, or sorry, my light is always here to camera left. I have this arm here be the base. And then this arm, so her left, comes up on top of this arm. And this hand is always right here supporting this cheek. So that if her head is going to go in any direction, it's going to tilt towards the light. So that I can make sure I'm always lighting her properly from the head and hair down. So again, this arm for me is always the base. And then I pull this one up on top of it, resting this hand right here on this arm. And the cheek is supported by that again. So her head, if it's going to tilt, will tilt in this direction towards the light. But this edit here is beautiful. The skin looks perfect. I don't want to say, I guess I don't want to say perfect. So I don't want you to think it looks fake or skin smooth. It's just beautiful. It looks natural, but soft, glowing. It's just so pretty. And these lips here, now that you've zoomed in and cropped, I can really see these gorgeous details of her eyebrows, her lash line, her nose, and these lips. So this edit is beautiful. I wouldn't really change anything about it. Um, if you wanted to do a little bit of lightning on this side, you could, but I like the difference um, in light versus shadow here because I think it creates three-dimensionality, roundness, realness, and I like that in my images. So I would leave this amount of shadow here because to me it's real. Beautiful image for number one. And then 
this cute little girl. Um, this whole setup here is so cute. It feels very patriotic. Getting ready for the 4th of July. This expression that you've captured here is so sweet and candid. She is a beautiful little girl. I love the way you've pulled everything together. The exposure looks really pretty good. She's got a nice light spot here on the left side of her face. Some shadows here on the right. And the white balance looks really good. I can always tell when the white balance is slightly off because obviously the white in this beadboard backdrop wouldn't look white. So this is a great white balance, a great exposure to start with. Shouldn't take you any editing at all. Love the touches of whimsy with this background here. Her outfit is so well put together. Of course, I'm sure you would have loved to have her put her leg down, but with these little ones, they don't always take direction the way we think they could. Sometimes my method for dealing with that is to put them on something that's just slightly off the ground, a small stool, one of those circle rat -a -tat tubs upside down, a crate or something so that you, you, so that you have a less likely chance of getting a view up the dress of these uh, little kids that are on the move. So, but I love the way that you've tackled that issue of seeing up her skirt with this crop here. It's great. Um, now it's not a big deal. I might even crop up just a little bit more so that we don't have to see where you would think that her little underwear line is going to start crop up just a teeny bit more. Um, but her eyes here are so beautiful and sparkling. I love that with your crop, I could kind of see those catch lights before, but now with your crop and edit, those catch lights really make her eyes sparkle and they're so beautiful. I love that we can see her gorgeous lashes and brows. Her skin color looks warm and beautiful. I love the way you've smoothed out where that semi hot spot was on the left side of her face our left, I guess I should say. Um, this edit's beautiful. I wouldn't change anything about it. I think it's gorgeous. I love those hands on her lips too. It's so cute and candid. And then image number three. This little family pose here is so great. I love the way that you've positioned them all together, close, candid, connecting. I know it's so hard to get everybody to look at the camera at one time. Um, but you know, when when the kids aren't really cooperating in that respect, I just tell them to look at each other or, hey, everybody look at baby girl and, you know, capture a candid moment that the parents will love and remember. If I am going to go for a posed photo where I really want everybody to look at the camera, I just get it out of the way right at the very beginning of the session. So, you know, they have to sit still, they have to pose, they have to do what I say, but the rest of the session can be fun and playful and candid and silly. And we've gotten that stuffy, formal, everybody look at the camera pose done right off the bat. So here on the straight off the camera, this looks really great. You said you used a little bit of outdoor off camera flash here. It looks great. The lighting on them is wonderful. I still see I love that I can see the sun hitting some of the foliage back here. It's just beautiful, warm outdoor colors. I love to see a lot of depth of field in my outdoor portrait work. That's just what I aim for because I want the focus to really be on my subjects and for everything else to be there, but to be very unimportant. Oh, I can see your little umbrella over there. Um, so let me see, what were your settings here? F5, that's a pretty good place to be for a family of five to make sure that they are all in focus. And then I don't know what your focal length was here, but one way that you could increase the depth of field is to shoot as far away as possible. So if you have a 70 to 200, slap it on your camera and shoot it at 200. That's going to help with the compression and the distortion of this back here. And make it more out of focus. Again, pulling our attention here to this beautiful family. I just love that look for outdoor work. On your edit here, this is really great. It's just soft and subtle. It really doesn't look like much of an edit at all. So great time not spending um, hours and hours in Photoshop trying to correct mistakes. You started with a great straight off the camera. It's a subtle, nice edit. I see you've gotten rid of a little bit of the warmth here, especially in the foliage. I see it's really pretty warm. And now it's more green here, which may have been true to life when you were shooting this portrait. I like it. It's just pretty. Um, you could play around with some fun actions to help you maybe create a little bit more drama or pop here because that's what I do in my photographs. I like them to be really bright and vibrant and contrasty and poppy. 
But if this is your signature style, then stick with it because that's what your customers would be expecting to receive from you. And it is very pretty. Love the position here of the family in the bottom right hand of the frame. It's very visually interesting. The only thing I'm thinking I want to see here is some more depth of field. Uh, but really, that's about it. Wonderful images for week number three. I'm excited to see you again in week number four. Until then, have a great one.